thirty years ago, English and Scottish settlers had crossed over the Irish Sea to the Irish province of Ulster. The settlers came under orders of the King, and nearly all were Protestants. Although Ireland was under English rule, the taking of Irish land caused many people to resent the new English settlers. In addition, most people of Ireland were Catholic, which made them dislike the Protestant settlers even more. Thirty years later, the Irish now professed loyalty to King Charles I of England, but many still wanted to recover lands lost to the newcomers. They thought themselves humiliated by those who scorned the Catholic religion and the old Gaelic way of life. Boy, Donovan, how are you? Not good. Life hasn't been the same since those Protestant bastards stole me land. Can't farm enough taters anymore. I same. I used to be eating 40 taters a day. Lately I've only been eating a wee 35. Tough luck, Patrick. Something's gotta do something about this. Aye, okay. something's gotta change. And change it would. On the 22nd of October, an Irishman named Sir Phelim O'Neill went to visit his Protestant friend Lord Caulfield, like he often did. Only this time, he brought a group of soldiers with him. What is the meaning of this? Why are all these bloody people here? You know why, Caulfield. The rebellion. We were kicked off our land 30 years ago, and we want it back. So, you are taking Charlemont? Indeed we are, and we are taking you too. Get him, lads! Soon after taking Charlemont, Sir Phelim O'Neill assumed authority over Ulster and issued the proclamation of Dungannon. This proclamation is to inform all in this country that the present meeting and assembly of the Irish is in no way intended against the king to hurt any of his subjects, either the English or the Scottish nation, but only for the defence and liberty of ourselves and of the natives of the Irish nation. We order all people at once to return to their homes under pain of death, and promise that any hurt done to any person or persons shall be at once repaired. He falsely claimed that he had a document signed by the king authorizing this action, which encouraged many Catholics to believe they could lawfully join the rising with the king's blessing, while Protestants were left demoralized. After the proclamation of Dungannon, things did not settle peacefully everywhere. In some areas, chaos broke out as Protestant towns were plundered and burnt to the ground by Irish rebels. In Belturbid, a group of rebels seized the local colonists and led them over to a bridge. Most were thrown in to drown in the River Urn, while others were clubbed to death. In the winter of 1641, the rebels travelled around to different villages and banished the Protestant settlers. The Irish would strip the settlers of their belongings, as well as their clothes. Then they would threaten the settlers with death if they did not leave the area within a week. Since it was winter, many of the naked and homeless Protestants would die from exposure to the cold. The bloodiest massacre of the rebellion was the Porter Down Massacre. A rebel named Toolmacan led rebels to take the castle, pillage the town, burn half the houses, and drown 196 English Protestants in a nearby river. Rumours of massacres and other atrocities led to acts of vengeance by the Protestants. On January 1642, the McGee family, along with many others, were murdered in Antrim. Legend also has it that they were killed by being driven off the Gobbins Cliffs.
In 1642, leading Catholics from all four provinces of Ireland met in Kilkenny to set up a provisional government, called the Confederation of Kilkenny. There they drew up the first written constitution of Ireland. It supported the royalist cause and adopted the motto, For God, for the King, for the land of Ireland united. This new nation would stand for seven years before one Englishman decided enough was enough. Oliver Cromwell Let's go lads, north to Drogheda! The moment he set foot in Ireland, he marched his army north to the town of Drogheda. He hoped that opposition elsewhere in Ireland would collapse in the face of a decisive victory. On the evening of Tuesday the 10th of September, soldiers of Cromwell's new model army stormed the walls of Drogheda. They were ordered to show no mercy to any Irish who resisted. After heavy fighting, the new model army breached the walls. The fighting then moved to the mill market, where 2,000 Irish men were put to the sword. He also burned the steeple of St. Peter's Church. It was the decisive victory he hoped for, but the Irish didn't go down that easily. His army continued to move through Ireland conquering Irish towns and killing those who didn't surrender. Eventually, the Irish Confederation disintegrated and a policy of banishment was initiated to crush any further resistance. All transportable Irish people were forced to move west of the River Shannon, and the soldiers of the new model army claimed the conquered land as their own. Thus ended the Irish Rebellion of 1641.